Hard conversations at work are everywhere. I'm Jen Whitmer and I help teams and leaders solve conflict and personality clashes. And today, one of my favorites, Mary R. Snyder is coming on to just let me interview her and talk with her about hard conversations in the workplace. Mary is just a delight. <laughs> I thoroughly love her wisdom and all of the great things she has to offer in her multiple just in multiple facets of the work that she does. So she is here. Let's see if I can get her to join live. La, la. It's always the fun part of going live and waiting. For me. There she is. Yay! Hey there. Hey there. So welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. And Mary is currently in, I mean, just the best environment to talk about hard conversations. Tell us where you are, Mary. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to show y'all. Mary is live on a tour bus. <laughs> I'm in the back of a tour bus. Um, and it's noisy and loud. And we were supposed to be at our hotel uh, four hours ago. But life is, you know, life is life. And um, we had a tire issue, so we didn't have to have any hard conversations today. Um, but we got some tire stuff done. And so here we are. I don't have my little stand I typically put this on, so forgive me for kind of bouncing around a little bit. And again, the bus is moving. So, but I'm thrilled to be well, here. I'm, I'm thrilled, thrilled to be here. Joining us. So I gave people just a snippet that you have lots of different roles, but why don't you introduce yourself to the people and tell them a little bit about Absolutely. what you do and your different roles that you have while I grab my water. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey there, I'm Mary R. Snyder and I'm a speaker coach. I'm the host of Take the Stage podcast and I also am the founder of Activate Your Speaking Career and I work with Compassion International and I'm out on tour as the MC on this tour. So I wear a lot of hats. Um, it's um, fun and crazy. We're doing 11 cities in our 12 cities in 13 days or 11 cities in 12 days. It, I don't know. We're just all, we're off today. And then we have seven more shows. So we're excited to be here. Look so, at that. Look at that. So one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to you, Mary, is a little bit about the aspect of you coordinating a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. So I happened to get to see Mary in person on Saturday night this past week emceeing. And there was this exciting part of the show where we were waiting to find out who won something. And turns out that the cell service wasn't working. So Mary had to very quickly make a decision about how to hand out this prize. And, I'm and that could have been a really awkward conversation in front of hundreds of people. So can you just give me a little bit about what was happening in the back of your mind and how did you decide, oh, here's just what we're gonna do? <laughs> well, you know, as a, as a public speaker with a couple of years under her belt, I have, I have slipped in and out of these before. I knew when no one said, because what it is is you get the seat upgrade. You get to sit in the very front of the, the, the um, uh, church in this, this situation. And I realized when nobody responded, somebody yelled, cell service. We don't have cell service. I went, oh, no. Well, some woman way in the back just jumped up. And I thought, what the heck? Let's give them to her. But what you don't know, Jen, is at intermission, you could get cell service in the foyer. I had, yes. two, I had two lovelies come up to me and said, we actually are the ones that won. And y'all, what I had said is if you actually won and you didn't get it, you're going to have to sit in this woman's lap. <laughs> they weren't buying that. But the good thing is God is good, and I found them a couple of really good seats and moved them closer. But it's, you just have to be able to pivot and know that everyone is depending on you to make this work. Mm -hmm. So make it work. There you go. And I think what I loved about observing you were a couple of things. Like, here are some of the lessons I pulled out from that crazy little experience is one, that you were in control of a you. Like, you didn't let yourself get flustered. And I think when we get in the middle of hard conversations, not just on stage, but just even in the conversation with your spouse or your boss or whatever, we start to like, mm -hmm, 
that can happen. Yes. And when you can stay in control of you, the second great thing that you did comes out, which was just problem solving. Hey, we're yes. going to figure this out. And, and that is the key to hard conversations. And in the course, I'm giving these methods to help you problem solve, but that's what it is. It's staying in yes. control of us yes. and then, Ooh, problem solving. What I love that I've learned from you, Jen, is I had a hard conversation recently with an adult, adult daughter. If you're on here, adult daughter, you know who you are. I have two, <laughs> could be either one. Um, and I, I did not jump in and defend myself. Because mm. she came to me with a hard conversation, and it was a rightly so hard conversation. I didn't immediately start. To, now, everything in me wanted to defend myself and make excuses. Oh, yeah. But, but I just listened. I was so proud of myself because I said, I'm okay. I'm so proud of you. I know. What would Jen do? What would Jen do? Um, <laughs> it's a whole different slant on what a WWJD. Um, <laughs> but... And I thought, okay, okay, this is, you know, I had been listening to you talking about this and I thought I am going to let her speak her piece. She needs, I don't need to interrupt this. She needs to share her thoughts with me. And I mean, even though she was dead wrong, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she wasn't dead wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just love that. listened. Yeah. So tell me, what did that do for you? Like, what was the impact in that relationship and in that particular uh, conversation? You know, it, it immediately lowered the stress level mm. because, you know, the first thing you think is I'm being attacked. I'm yeah. being attacked. But immediately I thought, you know, I'm just going to listen to this because there's, there's some good stuff in here. Immediately it became a two-way conversation. And I yeah. love that. I allowed her to finish I was calm and I said, you know, I apologize for them, some things that I had handled poorly. And I said, can I, can I suggest some solutions for us? Again, another Jen thing. Yeah, keep talking, keep talking. And, and I said, what if, what if, because I can't control what she does. I said, what if I do this in the future? And she goes, yeah, that would be good. And then she said, well, I can do this because doing that modeling like you've taught us mm -hmm. you know this is this is what you can do so i was really proud of how calm because i'm gonna tell you we've had this same conversation we just revisit the same issue every few years <laughs> yes and there was a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth before a lot of tears i'd hang up i'd just be destroyed i'd be sobbing mm -hmm. i'm a bad mother my children hate me and none of that occurred it was like okay that was a good mature conversation yeah, we handled that. I love that. And I, I love what you said about first you listened. Like that is the yes. key. I think that is the key to both when we start a hard conversation and when we receive it yes. is, is really truly listening and that it lowered the intensity of everything. But the big like big rock of gold I want to pull out about that is that you're, you asked permission to offer solutions. And for those of us... <laughs> who are problem solvers by nature. Yes. We're like, well, here's what you should do. Well, what have you thought about this? Like those of us who do that, the step to ask for permission seems almost ludicrous. If I'm going to be honest, it seems ludicrous. Yeah, it does. It does. However, <laughs> I have found that time and time again, when I ask for that permission, mm -hmm. hey, can I offer a solution or would you like my advice? Or I, I'm seeing some things. Would you like me to tell you? It mm -hmm. immediately opens something up. It's almost like a big mystery. And, and that is huge. And then the yes. second thing was you offered what I was going to be able to do. And then yes. she offered back. Yes. That's well, so, so I, good. I think, that, I think that asking permission is so essential. And here's why. For me, it's, you know, if somebody comes to me with a hard conversation and then they start telling me what they think I should do, I'm immediately not doing anything you've asked me to do because you've already made me 15 ways to mad. <laughs> but if you say, can I have your permission? I will begrudgingly give it to you. But yeah. once I do that, it changes the tone of the conversation. When I say, well, yeah, I'll listen to what you have to say, even though it may be wrong, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But there's something about that, that even if we think the other person is wrong or mm. 
when we start off, I mean, clearly I would love for us to start with the posture of, I'm going to try to understand what you think. Like that's where we're really going. Right. But even if we disagree with them at the end, mm -hmm. we're disagreeing with the best of their argument, the yes. best of what they've come with. Yes. And then it's not getting waylaid and lost in the, well, that's dumb. It's stupid. And I don't even understand all of it. Right. Right. And that's I think really that's cool. the key is, yeah. you know, listening to understand what somebody is trying to say to you. Mm -hmm. It's and huge. I, it's huge. And I went, am a, and I'm learning cause I'm learning from Jen y'all. You need to learn from Jen. Jen's wise. <laughs> but um, I was typically a listen just till you stop, take a breath so I can get my point across. Cause I'm right. And you're not. That's how I typically move. Jen knows I'm an Enneagram eight. <laughs> we firmly believe we are always right. I mean, it may be because we are, but, <laughs> but I'm healthier and wiser because yeah. I follow my Enneagram coach over here, Jen Whitmer, and <laughs> listen to her. And, you know, Jen, it's so funny because I would, I would think, you know, I didn't think it was sinking in and how much more do I need to do and learn that I pick this up just how, because I know you've got a course coming up, how much more I need for that. And I'm going to, and I think I really should buy it for both my daughters. Is that passive aggressive? You think <laughs> a little bit? I think it's a gift we're all trying to do together. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't, I don't know that they would feel that way, but we could definitely try that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Well, I, one of the things that, you know, when I think about hard conversations, I am, totally a recovering conflict avoider while oh. I am the person who will interrupt and get excited and all of that kind of thing. If I feel like it's going to be hard, I'm going to be like, I'm out. Like I, I've sure. reframed it. It's totally fine. It's pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And right. that just caused so much difficulty time and time and time again, particularly sure. in workspaces yes. because at home you're kind of stuck with us. And eventually there's going to be some kind of blow up and we'll get it. But right. at work, it costs something. It costs yes. projects. It costs, right. well, I mean, I have a post earlier about how I got fired because I wasn't yes. willing to have a hard conversation. Right. And I, the cost of that was so great that I, I never want, I kind of like, I learned this lesson expensively. Um, and I actually, <laughs> let me show you how to do this. So you don't have to pay that cost because yes. it's so costly to yes. experience that pain and just ineffectiveness that right. we, right. that happens when we don't right. have the skills to do it yes. and learn how to have those hard conversations in ways, like you said, where everybody feels like, Oh, okay, we're doing this together. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. you against me and you against me. That's huge. Right. That's right. Huge. I love that. And for somebody who loves conflict right, and runs into it, but also runs into it with the mindset, or she did, that I am always right and my ideas are always the best and the brightest. That's not the healthiest way to deal with conflict. <laughs> it's true. It's Personal true. Experience. I love that you're even admitting it. Well done. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. I'm a work in progress. But <laughs> to, be, to be able to listen and to, I, I presented something today to um to some work people some people that i that i partner with and they were like yeah okay they listened they heard me and they said you know what that's not a fit for us right now now personally i think they're dead wrong but <laughs> but i respect the fact that they listened they took in the idea they processed mm -hmm. it out loud with me and then they said you know what not not right now yeah we hear you and it was not you know, it's not easy to go, hey, I think that my way is better. But the, it's, it's learning how to frame that and have mm -hmm. those conversations. Absolutely. And I'm going to make a guess here about what has happened with that very specific conversation you just mentioned. You know what? This isn't for us. But it left the door open for later. Yes. Because you yes. didn't come in with like, well, y'all are crazy. Burn that bridge. Yeah, let, me, let me tell you how you're supposed to do this. <laughs> That's Mary of, you know, 20, I don't know, probably 2020, um, <laughs> but maybe 2019 or 2018. Yes. Walking in going, let me explain to you why what you're doing is wrong and why this way is correct. Yeah. And it was a completely different conversation. Let me share this idea. 
mm -hmm. that I think might be interesting. Yeah. And, and yeah, so the door is very much open. It's like, yeah, you know what? We're not going to do that this time, mm -hmm. but Hey, and, but, and then pulled out a piece of it and said, but I think we might try this little small piece. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. I think one of the things that we forget, at least it's really easy for me to forget. I don't, I don't know if this is an experience of the people in the comments or you, Mary, where I forget that I'm holding all the context that I can see. Like mm -hmm. I have this experience and this experience and this experience and this knowledge mm -hmm. and this degree and all of this. And everybody else doesn't have all of that. So right. I can be a little bit fire hosey sometimes and give you all the information. And yes. that's really hard to drink from. Yes. And what I have to remember in hard conversations is I it's because I feel like sometimes I feel dishonest. Like if I don't give all of this to you, I'm not being honest. Right. When actually, if I give you the part that you can handle, if I give yes. you the cup of water and not the fire hose, then we can continue to drink. And then we can yes. continue. I can get some of your context. You can see my context. Yes. And sometimes what happens is later people are like, oh my gosh, you were right. Tell me more. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but it's so wait. hard to wait. I, just, <laughs> oh my gosh, I yes. was right in the beginning. If you just, okay. And then you have to learn not to say, well, if you'd listen to me in the beginning, I'm just saying that may or may not have come out of my mouth at some time. <laughs> Now oh, I leave yeah. it in my brain. I don't say it out loud. I may write it on a post-it note <laughs> just so I can get it out. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I love that. So let me, I'm going to ask you one more quick question before we go. Okay. When you are coordinating so many different people, so you're emceeing this event, you've got a stage manager who's talking to you, you've got the talent. <laughs> You've got this main speaker mm -hmm. who's talking to you. The audience is happening. And I mean, many people in my audience aren't like us. They're not the ones up on stage, sure. but yet they are managing, okay, my creative director needs this thing. My client needs this thing. My boss is saying this thing. You know, what do you do when you feel like I've got to manage all of these different components? What's your, yeah. what, what do you think about that? Like, just talk to me yeah. a little bit about those that's, conversations. That's really interesting you said that because last night our main speaker, Lisa Turkhurst, was just a wee bit behind schedule getting, because typically she's on deck before I walk on. So if she's not on deck before I walk on, I can't go out and I do about a two minute just um, vamping with the audience, having a good time, setting her up, and then I welcome her. Well, if I haven't played eyes on her when I walk out there, I'm processing my stage manager going, hey, she's not here, so you need to figure it out. The people in the back, I have to watch them because they are going to let me know when she is actually on deck. So there is a lot of moving pieces along with, like you witnessed, maybe the tech isn't working in the room mm. for whatever reason. And or maybe there's a situation that I need to be aware of in the audience because you've got um, I think we had a little over a thousand people. I've got like 16, 1700 tomorrow night. You're watching all of that. I think the key, the very key is to pay attention to what needs your attention. Ooh, say that again. Pay attention to what needs your attention. And here's what I mean by that. I knew that I had to pay attention to when talent was on deck. So I am consistently, I don't have an earpiece in, I'm holding a handheld. I'm consistently looking to the back of the room, watching the production team. Mm -hmm. They're shadowed back there and they're going to give me a thumbs up or a, a, you got it to let me know. Now, also, we've got to balance that to not override a conversation that I may be having in real time with somebody right there in the room. So pay attention to what needs your attention, but don't overlook what's happening right in front of you. It's, oh, it's such a, I mean, it's a balance, but it's life. Yes. I, oh, Mary, that was just excellent. Cause I think back to some of my <laughs> times when I was a leader and I'm managing, I'm waiting for an important piece of information yes. that is pertinent to what's going on yes. in this client meeting in meetings. When I was a school leader, meetings with parents, yes. meetings with teachers, all of that, you're waiting for it. 
but I can think of some specific times where I missed the important thing because I wasn't paying attention to what was in the room. Absolutely. I, I, or I wasn't clearly communicating. Now, clearly on stage, you're not going to say, hey, we're all just waiting for Lisa. I mean, you might after 10 minutes. But yeah. I mean, like in this meeting with a parent or something or with a client, right. I can be really clear and say, I'm actually waiting on an important piece of information that is valuable to our discussion. And that yes. just clears the room so you don't get weird. And you're not like, mm. right. and we don't think about that sometimes because it's a piece of vulnerability. Right. But oh my gosh, pay attention to what you need to pay attention to. Yep. And what's in front of you. That's just... And what's in front of you. I think we oftentimes, Jen, in con particularly in conversations, particularly in a hard conversations. I know for me, I would love to be distracted. I don't want to be in a hard conversation. Please <laughs> distract me. Please totally. girl, come by. And I think it's, it's so easy to allow, particularly in a hard conversation, to pick one thing and just hinge on that and not listen to the totality mm -hmm. of what they are saying. So yeah. not paying attention, but not paying attention to what needs the attention, paying attention to, well, I didn't think I didn't like your nail color. Well, that's not mm -hmm. what they're talking about. They're talking right. about something different, but yeah. So absolutely. That's so good. So good. And we get hung up on stuff like that really easily because you're right. Two things. One, we want to be distracted because we don't want to be here or right. two, we want something to blame. And whenever we run into blame. something yeah. to blame, we're usually headed away from peacemaking mm -hmm. and, and toward all kinds of disaster. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, all yes. Kinds. And we won't, and that's not where we find solutions. No. no. When we start blaming things to so find the solution, we'll figure out and figure out the source. The, to me, that's the thing mm -hmm. is where did we get here? Let's find the solution. And then how do we get here and how do we not get here again? Yeah, absolutely. One of the modules in the How to Have a Hard Conversation course, which y'all, it's an at your own pace course. You like get videos I, for me and that kind of stuff. Okay, but, let me pause you right there okay. and just tell you how much I love an at your own pace. Because while I love a great course, you know I love a good course. <laughs> I also don't want to be behind and I will get frustrated. Yeah. And this is something that I want to be able to pull out when I'm getting ready to walk in to that person's office. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do me a little refresher. I'm going to take mm -hmm. me about 30 minutes and I'm going to, I've already done the course, but I'm going to do a refresher. Absolutely. Gonna, okay. And you know, just because of that, that was in my mind. So no video is longer than 12 minutes. Oh, that's so, so good. So you can go back and go, I need that one thing. And yeah, um, yeah. so one of the lessons is about how do I kind of get down to the bottom of oh. what is this issue? Is it a systems issue? Uh -huh. Is it a personal uh -huh. issue? And it's usually both. But yes. like, how do I figure out and tease out which one is which? Because if I start trying to solve personal issues with systems solutions, it yeah. never fits. Or if yeah. I try to solve systems issues with personal solutions, it doesn't yeah. fit either. Yeah. So I go into the conversation with the wrong ingredient. And yes. that never makes a good cake. So that's one of the things that I really ha wanted to help people pull apart about what is Love the that. root of this? Because we're always looking for some escape. Oh, listen, <laughs> I'm looking for somebody to track. blame. I mean, I still blame my children for the extra body weight I carry. <laughs> Let me mention to y'all, my children are grown women, okay? <laughs> grown women we'll um, just let you handle that it's i okay. just i just have to that's just my own thing that's my own thing <laughs> absolutely oh my goodness well mary i so appreciate your time i want to say one quick thing about the course and then i want to ask yes. you my final question so if absolutely. you um are interested how to have a hard conversations is only available for purchase through wednesday so you get the course for forever. As long as right. the course exists, you get it. And I have no plans of ever taking it down. So, okay. but the availability to get it is Wednesday and it closes Wednesday at midnight. So make sure that you, you can go to the link in my bio. Um, I think there's a link somewhere on the live of, of a product. That's a whole new thing I'm learning, right. um, but you can get it today and you have access to it today. It's not like it's not dripped out. So you get it all today wow. and it has four modules that, like we said, talk about starting with yourself, conversation basics, what do you say in the middle of the conversation and how do you close it well so it's not all super awkward? And then what do you do when somebody comes to you and how do you manage that as well? So all of that's in there. So how to have hard conversations, link in my bio, get it before Wednesday. So Mary, 
tell us where we can find you and what you're doing because I am so grateful for your time and oh, you ooh, so some fun. great wisdom today. You tell are the so people kind. where they can find you. Well, first of all, I just need because I know more people have come in. Y'all, I am on a bus. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to be in a hotel room. We have just pulled up at the hotel. I am so happy to be here. I am so tired of being on this bus with these people. Okay. <laughs> second, second, I'm out on tour, y'all. Well, you can find me at Mary R. Snyder here on Instagram. You'll find links in my bio to all the things I do. You'll find my podcast. You'll find out some information about Activate Your Speaking Career. And if you are somebody who believes you have a message to share, I have a Facebook group. I know, I know, not everybody likes Facebook, but we're, it's nice. Just, it's kind, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can find that at Take the Stage Speakers. And I'm just going to say, if you are somebody who is considering having a hard conversation, and if you are breathing, you are considering having a hard conversation. <laughs> it's really true. <laughs> because you need this course. You need this course. Thanksgiving is coming, friends. <laughs> Listen, you're going to have to have, you're going to have to have, you know, Aunt Sally, you know how she be. She gon' she gonna come to Thanksgiving, and then you're gonna have to deal with crazy the crazy cousin. It's gonna be at Christmas, and you know, and then the, and there's always that uncle, that one right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's coming to Christmas. And you know, he's gonna talk politics, so <laughs> so he's gonna be fun. So you need to have this. But Gian, you're a treasure, and thank you for letting me come on. And y'all, I text her and I said, um, I'm in a bus with a bunch of people. <laughs> she said, Whatever. Okay. I was like, do you have headphones? It'll be fine. Yeah, I'm good. We're good. <laughs> I'm surprised the cat isn't on me. I was filming a story earlier and the cat was like, no, I'm here now. So oh. he is in the story. <laughs> okay. Okay. Welcome cat. <laughs> uh, Mary, thanks so much for your time. I it's really, really appreciate it. Go follow Mary. She is just a, a delight. And we have, I don't know if she's wearing fun earrings, but Listen, all I, fun earrings. I, I almost made the bus stop. <laughs> I said, do you think it's okay if I make the bus stop? My earrings are down below in the bay. <laughs> Tour manager went, I don't think so. I hope you're kidding. I was like, well, I wasn't, but okay. I we'll mean, I wasn't, that. but okay, I'll take your answer. We'll just go with that, okay? <laughs> I'm still wearing my pajamas, y'all. This is just my life right now. <laughs> so great. Well, thank you again for your time on the bus. I hope you get into the hotel yep. and have a great rest of your tour. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thanks. Bye. Bye.